This is the last video of the MOOC on Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn. Welcome. Today, I would like to give a few concluding remarks. But we've covered a lot of material so far. Congratulations for making it here. And thank you to everyone involved, the instructor, but also the support staff and audio video team, and you, the students. This is a lot of work. In this course, I would like to take a step back. And today's messages will focus on the big messages of the MOOC, but also how we go from machine learning to impact on society, the bigger picture. Let me start with a few big messages from the MOOC. First, the machine learning pipeline. The learners, the predictive models, are learned on a train set and applied to a test set that is different from the train set. They are built from a data matrix. In scikit-learn, it works with a given number of feature per observation. Often, transformations of the data are necessary, such as encoding categorical variables. This must be done by using only information available at train time. And for this, you should use the scikit-learn pipeline object. We've seen how we should adapt model complexity to the data. We want to minimize an error on the test set. However, inspecting the train error can detect underfit models that are too simple for the data. There are multiple hyperparameters that control the behavior of models. They can control model complexity, and it is important to select those hyperparameters. In scikit-learn, this is done with the grid search CV object, the random search CV object, or similar objects. Finally, we've covered a few specific models. Understanding a model is important to know when it is suited to the data, but also to have intuitions on how to debug it. We've covered linear models that work by combining the values of features. They're typically useful for data that has many features or very few observations. We've covered tree-based models that make a series of binary choices, thresholds on the values of the features. They're particularly useful for tabular data, typically that is made of columns of different nature, age, weight, sex. And I would like to emphasize the HIST gradient boosting regressor and classifier. Those models are particularly useful in many situations, and I advise you to always give them a try. Now, if you want to learn more about scikit-learn, keep in mind that the scikit-learn documentation is very rich, didactic, and continuously improving. These documentation comprise a full user guide that discusses not only the software, but also the statistical intuitions behind the methods. If you have any questions, please ask them on Stack Overflow. We have a vibrant community that's willing to help. Scikit-Learn is an open source project powered by a community. It is free, open, and we're trying to be as inclusive as possible. Help us building a community by training others, by helping our communication, our advocacy. Now I would like to talk a bit about the bigger picture beyond machine learning and the kind of impact that we can have on society. Now, when we run a machine learning project, something that is often forgotten is how important validation and evaluation are. A measure of prediction accuracy is always an imperfect estimate of how the model will actually generalize to new data. So my advice is, as you narrow down on a solution, spend increasingly more time and effort on validating it. For instance, when you're running cross-validation, do many splits. This will, of course, cost a lot of computational power but it is worth the effort to avoid selecting the wrong model. 
Now, machine learning is only a small part of the problem most of the time. An important question is how to approach the full problem, how to consider machine learning in a full value chain. Acquiring more data and better data is often more important than using fancy models. You might want to think about how you will put the models in production when these will be used routinely. There, it is important to keep in mind that technical depth is costly, so you should prefer models that are easier to maintain and require less compute power. You might want to check whether there are drifts in the data distribution, and for this, you might want to monitor the prediction of your model so that if the data changes, you notice and do not predict wrong recommendations. Now, keep in mind that the technicalities and technical craft is not all. We gave methodological elements, but these are not enough to always have solid conclusions from a statistical standpoint. Once you know how to run the software, the biggest challenges are understanding the data, its shortcomings, and what can and cannot be concluded from an analysis. Automating machine learning does not solve data science. Domain knowledge and critical thinking about the data are crucial. One question to ask yourself is, how will the predictions be used? Errors may mean different things in different application contexts. For instance, an important aspect is the operational risk. If you're working on placing advertisement, the errors are rather harmless. But for medical applications, the errors can kill. The operational logic will change whether it is better to have false detections or misses. Suppose, for instance, we're interested in detecting brain tumors. If a detection will send a patient to surgery, false detections are very dangerous. However, if a detection will send a patient to an MR scan, misses should really be avoided because MR scans are harmless and brain tumors are very dangerous. Now, the predictions that you make may modify how the system functions. For instance, predicting who will benefit from a hospital stay may overcrowd some units of the hospital and thus change the positive impact of the hospital on inpatients. We need to think about the choice of the output and the labeled data set. What we choose to predict is a very loaded choice. And we need to make this choice carefully. The interesting labels are often very hard to get. So we typically focus on easy ways of accumulating labels. However, these come with biases. Our target is often a proxy of the real quantity of interest. Data always comes with biases. It may not reflect the ground truth. For instance, if we're interested in monitoring the propagation of a disease, the data that we'll have will be a function of the testing policy. This testing policy may change with time. It may be uneven across the population. Typically, we get higher quality data for rich people. Another problem is that the current state of affairs may not be the desired one. For equal qualifications and responsibilities, women are typically paid less than men. A learner will pick this phenomenon up, predict accordingly, and amplify those inequalities. We are dealing with predictive models. Those do not capture always causality. For instance, if we consider people that go to the hospital, we will note that they die more often than people that do not. So we might conclude that going to the hospital is dangerous. This, of course, is a fallacy. And the reason is that we're comparing different populations. The people who go to the hospital have a different health baseline than the people who do not. Another example, 
having a heart pressure greater than the threshold will often trigger specific care, which is in itself good. A predictive model, a learner, will pick up that above threshold heart pressure is good for you. Now, we should not conclude that it is in itself good for you. It is mediated by the healthcare system. In pure predictive settings, these informations are beneficial for the predictions. However, they should not be trusted when designing interventions. Indeed, the predictive model will not carry over to a new system. And if we modify the existing system, its prediction, if they are mediated by such features, will no longer be trustworthy. In addition, the interpretation of the predictive model is subject to caution. Now, we need to think about the societal impact of machine learning. These days, AI systems help people get loans, jobs, medical treatment. They even help law enforcement. Picking up biases in the data, shortcomings of the data, will harm people. If you want an introduction to these problems, FairLearn sets them in the same framework as Scikit-Learn. Machine learning can modify society by shifting decision logics, power structure, operational costs. All this change our society. Let us make it better. Those challenges lie at the intersection of technology and society. No solution will be purely technical. Now, this is the end of the MOOC, and it is your time to use these tools. I strongly believe that machine learning drives one of the most important technological revolution of our time. It is a fantastic opportunity to improve our world. With Scikit-Learn and with the MOOC, we try to lift the technical roadblocks as much as possible to empower people so that they can solve the problems that matter to them. So, use this technology, have fun. Thank <laughs> you.